Good morning, and welcome to the Power in the Word broadcast of the Pilgrim Progress Missionary Baptist Church, where Rev. Gerald Parker Sr. is our wonderful pastor. Our church motto is Let's Do It God's Way. Expect a blessing. Let's listen. This is the sixth sermon on unity in the church, and I just believe with all my heart that God's Word it's making a difference. I really believe that. And uh, God is going to take this word. He's going to replenish this church. He's going to revive through his word. Not through Gerald Parker, because I'm just a, a vessel, but his word. I'm going to ask that you return to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, because this is where we've been for the last few weeks. And stay with us, because we're not quite through with this series on unity yet. But if you go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 through 6 because we've been pinching off of it each week. And we're going to start with verse 1, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 1. And Paul says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith, wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Now, verse three, this is the key verse. This is the key verse. And this is what we're all supposed to be doing, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit, amen, in the bond of peace. And then last Sunday, we, we, we looked at verse 4. Uh, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Now, we're going we're gonna to focus on verse 5, and I want you to keep your Bibles open because this is, this, is, this, this is it. And it says this, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's what it says. One Lord. Say it, say it. Say one Lord. One, Lord. one, faith. one faith. One baptism. One baptism. You may be seated. I had a chance this morning to kind of go back over this little book of Ephesians. And before I, I read Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses one through six, the Holy Spirit led me just to go back and read those first three chapters. And it really amazed me to discover how many times Paul said, we or ours and us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it amazed me to, to, to read where in those first three chapters he used the word we and ours and us. And I really believe then what the Apostle Paul was doing when he wrote this letter from from a prison cell, he was trying to explain to this church at Ephesus and to believers that were going to come on the scene that we are to live as one. If you read verse 4 through 6, he says the word, the number one, he gives us seven different elements of our unity, seven different uh, unity, seven different certainties. So what he does, he names seven different things that causes us to, to be unified. In verse four, he says, there is one body and one spirit and then he talks about one hope. So what he was saying was, we are one body, we have one spirit and we also have one hope. Everybody say one. 
And that word, and I, I didn't get a chance to say this a whole lot last week, but that, that word one, the Greek word is heist. And the word one here represents unity. Whenever you see the word one here in, in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses four through six, he's talking about unity. When something is one, it cannot be divided. When something is one, it cannot be deterred. When something is one, it cannot be torn up. And guess what? What he was letting the church know and letting us know that we are one. We are part of one body. We, we, we all have the one spirit and we have one hope and he named seven of them three in verse four three in verse five and one in verse six everybody say seven and the Lord knows the number seven represents perfection and completeness but let me tell you what blew my mind when I got to when I got to uh, Ephesians the fourth chapter verse five and saw this this first two words I had to stop right there because I really wanted to work on one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's what I did. But, but I kept getting bogged down when I would move from one Lord to one faith. And the Lord said, stop right there, Gerald Parker. What I want the people to know, he said, this part, he said, you're in the middle of it. He said, there are seven different unities that we have. He says, and the one Lord is in the middle of the seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That three on one side. Through on the other side, but the middle one is one Lord. He said, let me tell you. He said, hey, he said, if you don't preach another word, if they can get that, if they, if they can get this one thing right, it can help Pilgrim progress. They need to understand that they have one thing in common, and that is one Lord. I did a little research and found out that if you read the Septuagint Bible, which is all Greek, over 6,000 times, you'll come across the word capital L-O-R-D, Lord. In the Old Testament, uh, the Hebrew word for Lord is Jehovah, which means the self-existent one. And in the New Testament, the Greek word for Lord is Kyrios. Watch this now. It means owner. It means master. It means someone who is in control. It means one who is the boss. It means the king. It means the head. It means one who exercises power over someone else. And, and, and then, and then uh, one definition of, 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 of Lord is it, it means supreme boss. In other words, there's no one higher than this one. When, when Paul said one Lord, he was talking about Jesus Christ. And I need to tell you right now that Jesus is not a Lord, but Jesus is the Lord. None greater than Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and Jesus is Lord. And I, I was reading an excerpt from uh, an anonymous writer. Uh, they don't know it, but the author is unknown. It was a, it, this is from a little booklet called One Solitary Life. If you don't mind, allow me to read this because I guess they were talking about Jesus. It says, here is a man who was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another village. He worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30 and then for three years was in an itinerant preacher. He never owned a home. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family. He never went to college. He never put his foot inside a big city. He never traveled more than 200 miles from one place to another. He never did one of those things that usually accompany greatness. He had no credentials but himself. It said, but while still a young man, the tide of popularity opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies. He went through a mockery of a trial. He was nailed on a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, his executors gambled for his only piece of property he had on earth, his coat, 
When he was dead, he was taken down and laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. And he said, no man has ever had any kind of effect on humanity like this man. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I, I know what that brother was talking about, but he missed a whole lot of stuff there. Now, 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 what he should have done, what he should have done, he was, he was trying to, to be cute when it talked about Jesus Christ. He was trying to let us, but I'm going to tell you right now, yeah, 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 uh, he, he, he missed one thing. Yeah, because that, uh, up to that time, there had been at least 30,000 men that had died on a cross. Yeah, 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 yeah. At, at, uh, dying on the cross was a common uh, execution for men who were ferocious criminals or those who were poor. And Jesus was one of the 30,000 that had died on the cross and, 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 and he was buried. But there was one thing that he, mi he missed one thing. I said he missed one thing. Well, he really missed two things because when Jesus died, he, he didn't die for his own sin. When he died, he did not die because he had done wrong. He died in place of us. But then when he died, something that he missed, it, Jesus rose from the grave. Now, now, that's why we can call him Lord because Lord means you have power over everything. And Jesus proved why, why, he, was, why he was ministering. He proved he had power over the sea when he spoke to the wind and waves and said, peace be still. He proved uh, that he had power over the elements because he took just a few fish and bottle loaves and fed 5,000. Uh, and he proved that, 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 that he could raise somebody from the dead. But when he died, he proved he had power over death because on that third day he got up with all power in his hands. And because of that, he is Lord. I yeah, need to say that Jesus is Lord. And guess what? There's nobody like Jesus. And, 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 and what I like about it, and that, and what I like about it, yeah, 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 that there's just one Lord. And turn to somebody, repeat, they say, just say with me, there's nobody, nobody. like Jesus. Just, and, and just one, everybody say one Lord. One Lord. Yeah, one Lord. One Lord. And, la, 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 come up to me, let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a job, you ever been on jobs, and uh, you knew who the supervisor was or who the boss was? But then when you start working with people, you had some people work with you who thought they were the boss. Anybody ever? Anybody, anybody got a job like that now? Raise your hand. I mean, here you are working. They got the same position you have. But they walk around like they're the boss. Try to tell you what to do. And that's what makes your job hard. And because no one want to put them in a place. You see, in most jobs, you have one supervisor or one boss. You, but but when, you, when, you have, when you have two or three bosses or two or three people trying to, that makes, it, that makes it so difficult. But thank God for the church because in the church, we don't have but one boss. And his name is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, we, we might need to get this straight in our homes too. Because the reason why that these homes, Brother Deacons, are in a mess now, and the reason why I'm not picking on the children, the reason why the children is running the house these days, telling the parents what they ain't going to do, what they will do, is because it has not been established who's the boss. We have spoiled our children and they're making them think that they can make up their own minds about things. If you don't want to go to church, that's all right. I, they, you know, you don't have to do that. Or they don't have to. No, no, no. Once, you under, once they understand who is the boss. You know what? Another word for Lord is owner. I'm going to tell you now, I got to say this. Uh, you need to let those kids know. Uh, this ain't your house. That's not your bed. Get that chicken out your mouth right now. You didn't pay for that chicken.
If you want some clothes, go down, go down to where you want to go and get what you want. The bottom line is simply this. Once they understand, we got to establish the fact of who is in charge at the house. Because if you don't do that, they will run you from the age of three, two, from the age of two, all the way up to 36. You have to establish, you have to establish who is in charge at the house. But, but you don't have to worry about that when it comes to the church. Because we know who's in charge. And I, and I need to tell you that. I, 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 let me tell you who's not. Gerald Parker Singh is not in charge. You can just go on and clap. I mean, I, I'm not, not in charge of nothing. Somebody said, Reverend, I'm glad you said that because I'm, I'm a man just like you are and I'm a human being just like you are and, I, and just because you say something, I don't have to do it. Holy, wait, wait. So, oh, I, I, I do need to say something. Although I'm not in charge, the one who is in charge told me to come here and represent him. And the only time that you are not to follow me is when I speak and you can't back it up with the word. Because my opinion don't mean anything in this church. But when I say the word of God says, this is how, then that's, in other words, you ought to follow me as I follow the Lord. It kind of, kind of remind me when I was when I, kind of remind me when I was coming up. Uh, some of y'all been there before. I, I'm trying to make this plain. We're talking about unity. Well, yeah, I remember so vividly. You ever, you ever, have you ever had a, in in your childhood? And one of your brothers and sisters said, uh, "You need to come and wash the dishes, or you need to do so and so." And you tell them, "You ain't my mama. You ain't my daddy." But things changed when they said, "Mama said." Daddy said, when, now, 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 although you're not the boss, but I got my orders from daddy to tell you or mama tell you, you need to do so. All I'm trying to tell you, once the word comes from daddy or mama, it's best you be about doing it. That's all I'm trying to let you know. When you, when, when you start talking about Lord, yeah, thank God we have, everybody say one Lord. Thank God. And Jesus is Lord. And I need, I need to say this right now. Thank God for one Lord. Guess what? He's Lord whether you believe it or not. Thank God for one Lord. And this is the thing. Now, now I, I got to say this. And Lord, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is what the Holy Spirit told me to tell you. Just because you declare that Jesus is Lord still will not cause unity in the church. Watch this. I'm going. If somebody sleep, just hit this hunch them. If just somebody sleep, declaring that Jesus is Lord is good. But you got to graduate from Jesus is Lord to Jesus is my Lord. When you make it personal. And when it comes to the Lord, you can say, oh, the Lord, this and the Lord, that. But when you said, my Lord, yes, sir. you're making it personal. And until the Lord becomes your Lord, then there'll never be unity in the church. I, 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 know, I want you to know, I, I want you to know, when the Lord becomes your Lord, because he's your Lord anyway, but when you allow him to be Lord, that means you will be obedient to the Lord. I'm getting to the I'm getting to the nun amen part now. You, you, that, that, when, when, when the Lord is your Lord, that means that you obey him. Did not Jesus say in St. Luke, why call me Lord, Lord? Why stand up all of the church that given on the God who's the head of my life? Why, 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 why are you saying all that and you don't do what I say? If he's the Lord, then you're going to do what the Lord says. When 
when when the Lord is your Lord, then you'll stay in your place. You'll realize he's the Lord and you are his servant and you are his slave. You got to stay in your place. In order for the Lord to be your Lord, you got to have ominous and recognize who you are and who you're not. He's the Lord and we are not. He's holy and we are not. We got to, be, we got to stay in our place. When, when, this is what I like. When, when, when the Lord is your Lord, you got to realize, guess what? I thank the Lord. Guess what? You are not in control. Oh, I know that's hard to think about. We like to think we're in control, but I've come to tell you, how many of you, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but there have been times in my life that I thought I was in control. I thought I called the shots. I thought because I made this decision, this would take place. But let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters, and I thank God for these experiences that God put me in. I've been in situations where, hey, I did, I did not have the answer. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was against the wall. I I don't know what to do and I had to look up to, toward the heaven and I had to say Lord Father I stretch my hand to thee no other help I know if thou withdraw thyself from me where shall I go when you get to a point where you know what you got to what you're going to do then you have to trust God that's when you find out who's really in control you, 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 when you think you're in the control of something, you will never get God the glory. But I thank God today. You need to. I, I'm, I'm getting ready to close, but you need to understand as we close this message. You, we are not in control. The Lord is in control. Yeah. Hold, oh, somebody said, "Well, hold, hold it, Pastor. Hold it, Pastor. Hold it, Pastor. He's Lord, but is he Lord over everything? Hold it. Let me put you like this. How many of y'all are going to have people come to the house?" apartment uh, Thursday. Anybody raise your hand. You're going to have guests. Anybody? Uh, you're going to have nobody come. Then we invite me in. I mean. <laughs> anyway, when you do have guests, guess what? When you do have guests, guess what? When they come, they better go to the living room. That's, what, that's where they're supposed to go. That right thing ring when they come to your house, they go to the living room, don't they? They don't go in the bedroom now. <laughs> Better not go to the kitchen. You don't need to go there. You are my guest. You come to, you sit where? And when it's time for the bathroom, you go to the bathroom I tell you to go to. <laughs> Ain't got no business going to the closets. For what? That's not your house. You a guest. Just because you come, make yourself at home. Don't you stop telling folks that. <laughs> stop telling folks, make yourself at home. You, you don't bit more mean that. Make yourself at home. No, you don't want to do that. Because some people would take you up on that. But what I'm trying to let you know here in a, in a comical way is that when Jesus is Lord of your life, he's got to be Lord over all the rooms of your life. You can't just tell him here. He's got to be Lord of every room of your house. The Lord, every decision you make, it's got to be his. When he's the Lord of your life, it's not about his will, not, not about your will, it's about his will. It's about what he wants, it's about how, what he desires. I'm almost through. Now this what, this is it, this is it. It's okay, it's okay to say Jesus is Lord. It's wonderful to say Jesus is my Lord, but we cannot have unity like we ought to until you say Jesus is our Lord. The church is supposed to be full of people who recognize that Jesus is their Lord. And so if he's your Lord in your personal life, 
when you become a part of Pilgrim Progress or wherever, whatever local coming, you don't have monopoly on the Lord. The Lord is the Lord of their life. So now we have to say it collectively, the Lord is our Lord. He is our head. He is our director. So here at Pilgrim Progress, I give God the glory. The Lord is our Lord. Jesus was, Jesus was trying to teach unity even when he was teaching the brothers about prayer. Even in the model prayer, this is it, I'm closing now. In the model prayer, he was trying to teach us about prayer. And the first thing he said when you pray in publicly, don't you say my or I. You ought to say our Father. Because, yeah, 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 yeah. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy. Then he says here, our Father. Then he says, give us this day our daily. Not, not just give me. When, when you talk about the church, not only should you desire, but you'll be praying for one another that God supply all of our needs. Then he says, and forgive us our debtors. In other words, don't just forgive me, but forgive other our Then he says, and deliver us what? From evil. All I'm trying to say is this, that we are one. We ought to keep the unity. We got to understand that the Lord is our Lord. That's all I'm trying to say today. Let's keep the unity. Let's keep the unity. Let's stay together because we have one Lord and I give God praise for this one Lord. We're all in this thing together. Guess what? And I thank God the Lord is our Lord. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. We ought to keep the unity in the spirit of peace. But you know what? I got, I got to tell you here. Thank God for the Lord. We all have a reason to thank the Lord today. How many, you know what? I don't know how y'all feel about it, but, but, but since the Lord is our Lord, that ought to give us a reason for joy because the scripture says, it says what? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I got to tell you here, we ought to be thankful. We ought to be, we ought to be flipped. We ought to be jumping up and down. We ought to be doing somersaults. You know why? Because the Lord is. Everybody said the Lord is. The Lord is our strength and our salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall I fear? But what really I like about it, how, how, they getting ready to pass this so-called tax bill that's going to hurt a lot of people. But let me tell you right now, I can still have joy because the Lord is. The Lord is our shepherd. And we shall not run. The, I, I say the Lord is. And I don't care what they do. If they, if, if they shut down all the money in the world, I can still sing, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I know the Lord will take care of me. I know that y'all don't know what I'm talking about. The Lord will take care of us. Why? Because he is our shepherd. Everybody say, the Lord is my shepherd. And we ought to be unified. Why? One Lord, one faith. One baptism. Thank you for viewing the Power in the Word broadcast. If you would like more information about Pilgrim Progress Baptist Church services and ministries, please visit us at ppbc1912 at aol.com or call our church office at 501 372 4429 where our efficient church secretary will be happy to assist you. Join us again on Wednesday and or Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. Be blessed.